hey how's everyone doing so in today's video I just want to show everyone what to do and how to put GBA and the GBC and the GB cores for the analog pocket on using open FPGA so like I've mentioned in my prior videos about this update this is huge in terms of opening up the pocket just to be able to play ROMs which is amazing now I'm sure that wasn't the original intention but you know I'm sure they weren't too torn up about it so what I want to do is I'm going to show you what you need to do what you need to download then I'm going to show you where you have to put it as well as where you put you know the BIOS and all that good stuff as well so first let's get it let's get this part out of the way um, please leave a like and subscribe thank you everyone for doing it. I hope I earned your subscription today that'd be awesome thank you and uh, let's get into the video so one of the first things I wanted to mention is obviously whenever you do any of this kind of stuff messing with the memory card I really don't think there's any possibility of anything happening but there's always a small percent so you know do all this at your own risk just like as you would jailbreaking any of the other device like a 3ds or a Nintendo switch do everything at your own risk you know just keep it in the back of your mind I honestly feel like pretty much almost you know I would say 99.9% .9 of the time nothing happens but there's always that 1% or 0.1%. So that out of the way, let's just go everybody to the main website. So obviously, like I've mentioned in the past, um, all credit goes to a spiritualized 1997. Uh, this person did the analog pocket community a great service. So a big shout out to them and everything they've they've done. This is amazing, just to just, uh, say the least. So here are they here's what they already have they have open fpga gb and gbc and open fpga gba so right off the bat you can play gb you know game boy game Boy color game Boy advance all that good stuff right off the bat it's fairly simple uh, setup is straightforward so i already have it open so once you go to the website and it can be a little confusing because it's not really right there but the instructions are you know they're, they're not too complicated they're, they're pretty clear uh, one of the first things you need to do is get a GBA core and a GBC core I cannot provide that obviously he's not providing that for legal reasons I leave that up to you on how to get it you know uh, it's not that difficult in the world of Google just you know saying that but um, yeah so once you get that out of the way now this is where the interesting parts gonna happen first you need to install all the items and then you put that or you can just create the folder yourself because this folder won't be there so after you upload you know transfer all the files over the, the folder will be there and you just put the BIOS there so that out of the way obviously you need to have the latest firmware number two you need to up unzip all the contents of the root to your SD card and the appropriate folders which is pretty much just dump it to the root uh, you need the BIOS like I already mentioned uh, and then you place the ROMs in GBA common folders. One thing they don't actually mention is where to put the saves. Uh, the saves already have a spot, but it gets a little more tricky on that as well. And I'll talk about that in a second too. So first, you want to want to download it. You go right here, version 1.0.0. Click on it. There it is. I'm gonna download this one right here. You save it. That's it. It takes like a second. It really takes no time at all. And this is everything you need to just drag and drop. You literally just take this, and then you go to your analog SD card. Just drag and drop. Now, I already did it, so I'm not going to do it again. It doesn't have any benefit for me. But if you look at it, here is where you're going to put the ROMs, and you're going to put the BIOS. You're going to put it in assets GBA common and that's it that's where you put ROMs and the BIOS and that's straightforward uh, it's really nothing complicated on that side uh, and then let's go over to game with color same thing literally the exact same instructions save it open it up and exactly the same thing and this is where you put the uh, BIOS drag and drop and that's it let me show you how, how my uh, this is my memory card. I'm sure how it's set up. So, as you're going to see here, as it says, I have GBA and GBC. GBA, commons, this is where all the ROMs are. 
Now, if you click type, here's the BIOS. That's it, straightforward, nothing crazy. Uh, same thing for GBC, common. And, no, sorry, not type, there it is, there's the BIOS, and there's all the games. That's it, nothing crazy. Now, this is where it gets interesting. For your saves, this is where the saves go, okay? Now, I, it was interesting, I figured out that for all this stuff, you actually need to have the saves wherever you have it set up. So if you have folders in here, as that seems to be common, then it's not gonna pick up the saves. So the saves and the, and the ROMs need to be on the same type of folder. So asset GBA commons, it's gonna be the same thing for the saves. It'll just be saves GBA common. That's where the saves need to be. So no folders. So like what I have here, what are these? These are saves, these saves cannot really be there. Now I think these saves ended up being there when I tried to copy over the, I just didn't want to overwrite it. So that's why they're there. Honestly, I don't really need them, so I'm just gonna delete them. Because I already have those saves there, so there you go, they're gone. So make sure you do that whenever you're transferring over to saves. And you can transfer over to saves from an actual cartridge to the, uh, the cores itself. So that's pretty straight to the point. Now, from here, I'm just gonna show it to you again on the pocket, but that's pretty much it for the setup. There's really not much else. So let's just move over to the pocket now. All right, so we are now back on the pocket itself, and I'll just run through the uh, open FPGAs real quick, just kind of like what I did on my other video prior. So now let's quit from my from my own cartridge. Now, this is where you go after you do all the good SD card stuff. And and let me just show to you, actually, <laughs> let me show it to you in one second. Let me go grab the SD card, that might be helpful. Okay, so I put the SD card in, because that would be very helpful. All right, so it looks like, it's very interesting to have a Game Boy and Game Boy Color separated. Um, I don't really think it makes much of a difference. Um, just curious actually. Let me see. You know, Pokemon Crystal was a good one. It would always tell you you couldn't play it. So let's try Crystal. Let's see if it thinks it's a. Right now, it thinks it's a Game Boy. So it thinks it's a Game Boy. Yeah. And look, and it's continuing where I left off. It's continuing exactly where I left off on the cartridge. Now, one of the things I heard mentioned that you can't change the display mode. Let me see. Nope. So the display mode cannot be changed. Keep that in mind. Unlike an authentic cartridge or an EverDrive or an Easy Flash, you can change the uh, display mode. This one you cannot. Let me see. Let's see if that can happen here. Pocket. This. Nope. System. Uh, let's see, video. Nope, it's not change. Okay. All right, well, there you go. It's not the biggest, not the worst thing in the world. But I guess uh, you do lose a feature there. So it's one little thing that goes to the Ever EverDrive or a flash card in general. Okay, so let's quit. Game Boy Advance. All the stuff that are in the common folder for Game Boy Advance is right here. Okay, and like I mentioned, when you put the save, you saw in Pokemon Crystal, it goes right over. Now that being said, like I've mentioned, you do lose out some features, but honestly, it's not a kind of like, you know, it's not a break. You know, it's not gonna make or break it, you know, it's some features you might be able to live without and have no problems not having it. I would say that it takes a little longer for it to load in an EverDrive. Again, that's really like microscopic compared to the benefits of it. Um, 
one of the biggest things I would say you're gonna lose is like at least for the uh, Easy Flash Omega, you lose some pretty good features, um, like being able to. Well, not, not even. I'm trying to think what features you would lose. I guess NES. That's both EverDrive and Easy Flash. You lose uh, NES emulation. Uh, what else do you lose? Neo Geo Game Gear for your EverDrive. Uh, you lose that, but that's some stuff that might come later on where it's really not like, it's not the end of the world. So you, that still might come. Uh, I guess one of the biggest things, if you're big into Pokemon games, you'll lose real-time clock, which is a pretty big deal for some games. So I guess that's something to keep in the back of your mind if you're big into Pokemon cards, but then that's where you might just want to get a single cart. But honestly, at the same point, you might as well just get a flash card if, if that's not your thing. But other than that, this is really good. I'm very happy with the results that I'm seeing. So this is the exact same gameplay from the cartridge. I could not be happier with what I see in front of me. So, all right, everybody, I hope this helps people. If uh, you still need additional help, let me know. If you see any problems that might arise, just shoot me a comment and I'll, you know, maybe I'll, I'll help, try and help walk you through it. All right, everybody, have a good one.